I'm just going to keep it right here. Can I do that? Y'all, we're going to roll like we did last week. Just roll with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Just stay there. Y'all ain't got to be afraid to play. Y'all encourage them a little bit. Say, man, play that thing back there. Just play it. Use your gift. Use your gift. Hallelujah. 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I'm just going to tell you right now that God is challenging some of you to praise in a way you've never praised before. Now here's, here's the thing, is we have to have a praise mindset in the presence of all pressure and all pain. You follow me? We have to maintain, it has to be who we are, not something that we think about and we do when things are right, when it feels good, when situations are working out. We have to be a people that have a praise mindset in the middle of all kind of turmoil. Hallelujah. You can do what you want to do. You can sit down, stand up. I don't know. Half of you stayed standing all week last week. But I'm just going to go right here. It says, 2 Chronicles 20. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria, and they were in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. Can I tell you something? Fear will be present. Fear will be present. I taught you a few weeks ago that fear is a principle. You follow me? Fear is not an emotion. Fear is a principle. Right? And it will make a difference the, the scope of your life and where you go when you determine what you will do with that fear. Amen? Yeah. It says, and Jehoshaphat feared, but I like what he did. Come on. Yep. Somebody said, I need to be a little bit more like Jehoshaphat. Amen? Yeah. In the presence of fear, it says, and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaim the fast throughout all Judah. Bring me down just a little bit. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven? He basically said, are you not I am? Everything that I've heard about you, is it true? I stand on every word that's been said about you. Every promise you've ever made. Are you not the God that rules in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? God, I don't just believe this morning that you rule over where you're at. I believe you're in charge of everything I step in. I believe you rule in every place I move. I believe regardless of wherever I go because I have committed myself to you that you will meet me there and that your rule and your reign and your dominion will be present everywhere I step. Come on now, you gotta like that. Does your rule not stretch beyond the borders? Does your rule not stretch beyond people regardless of their race, color, and creed? Are you not the God of China and the God of America at the same time? Now here's what you gotta say. Are you not the God of my problems and the God of my victories at the same time? <laughs> See, that's why I can stay in that praise mind. Because, hey, hey just because mess come against me, don't, it didn't change my God for nothing. It might have tried to shake me, but God's still standing there looking at that thing like, Jack, you can't touch me. You can't overcome me. You can't fight me. Ah, can I preach a little bit? Are you not God? who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend forever. And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying if disaster comes upon us, whether it be sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine. Now watch, listen. Let me change the language right here a little bit. 
whether it be pain and attack whether I deal with spiritual harm or my body deals with harm are you still not God whether it be in judgment whether people try to challenge my character whether people try to come against me the naysayers the critics those that want to tear me down those that want to rob my promise those men that literally don't want to see me walk into the destiny of my life whether it be in judgment are you still not my God in pestilence when everything has risen around me to aggravate me when everything has been strategized around me to frustrate me or in famine when it appears that I'm in lack are you still not I am and this is what they said regardless of whether my character is challenged regardless of whether I seem like I'm in lack regardless if I wake up and everything's trying to frustrate me regardless if I'm dealing with pain in my body <laughs> it says we will stand before this temple and in your presence for your name is in this place and we will cry out to you in our affliction and you will heal and you will save Father, I thank you for the power to preach and teach your word. May you be with your people. God, may you challenge them today. God, literally, Lord, I pray, Father, for repenting minds today. I pray that you establish a new way of thinking. Secure us in the thought of the Lord. Secure us in the presence of the Lord. Secure us in the confidence of the Almighty God. And may we walk out, God, with a different language than we walked in with. Father, we give you honor. May your blessings be upon your people. In Jesus' name, everybody shout into the heavens, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you can sit down. You can sit down. What y'all doing? <laughs> What y'all doing? If I build a house, I ain't going to tear it down the next week. Right? I love y'all. Everybody, come on, y'all give it up for my, my guys back here. See, here's what I've been doing. I've been, I've been working to get them to just stay with me. But then I was like, well, just to heck with it. I'm going to force them. I ain't going to give them no opportunity to come down. Somebody get it. I'm the man with the microphone. Watch this. Y'all ready for this? Listen, I'm going to challenge you. And I need you to. I need you to be willing to shift in your thinking. It says, going back to verse 1 in, in chapter 20, it says, It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. And then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, there's, there's a lot of people, man. There's a lot of mess coming after you from everywhere. It isn't just coming from one angle. It's coming from all sides. It's almost like the enemy just went around to the surrounding territories of your life and began gathering an army and said, man, we're going after this one. I'm bringing it from every angle. All the people of Moab, all the people of Ammon, they're coming after you. A great multitude is coming after you. And Jehoshaphat feared. Listen, the enemy... The enemy will work up everything he can in your environment to strategize an assault on your life. And it's not because he wants to steal your health. And it's not because he, does, he wants to steal your wealth. All right? He don't need your money. There have been too many people that have let him rob their money already. That's why the Bible says that the wicked will store it up for the righteous because God's coming to take it back. He don't, he, don't, he, don't need, he don't need your money. 
you got to quit. I mean, I, I got to pray it away because he's trying to steal my house and my car and my job and my ma- He don't care about none of that. Right. He's coming after your mind. The enemy is coming to rob your mindset. He wants to wrestle you into it. He will bring things from all sides of your life because he wants to establish you in a place that you begin to make decisions out of fear and frustration. And he will work every angle. If this one can't push your buttons, he'll go find the one that can. He'll find any way he can to frustrate you. To get you to a place where it says that Jehoshaphat feared. The enemy is after your mindset. Watch. Let me just give you a little education. Everybody say Jehoshaphat one more time. Say Jehoshaphat. He was the king. And you know who he was the king of? He was the king of Judah. Let me, let me flip this. He was the king of praise. No, I ain't, I ain't getting no help. He is the king of praise. Judah translated means praise. Watch, and so the, the enemy has strategized an assault on the king of the kingdom language. I'm going to come right here. You with me? He, he, he set up on this. He's not trying to rob their goods. He didn't come after their cattle. He didn't come after their gold. He didn't come after their coins. He didn't even come after the army. He didn't come after the rest. He came after the king. He says, because if I can get to the king, the king is the voice of the language of the nation. The king is the one that's the ruler of the praise. I'm going to come and challenge the king because if I can rob his mind, I can change his language. If I can find some way to frustrate him, I may can just rob his praise. Come on now. I'll do whatever I can. I don't need your money. I don't need your health. I need your voice. That's right. I need your voice. Come on. That's right. I need your shout. I'm coming to rob your shout. I'm coming to rob your mindset because if you see yourself frustrated and you see yourself confused and I can lock you into a place where it seems like all hell has come against you and you have no way out and victory is nowhere in sight, it can begin to change your language and it will shift you to being a person to where you become a critic and you become negative rather than being one that shouts to the almighty God. I'm coming after your language. The enemy is after your mindset because it's after your praise. And one of our biggest problems is that we often respond with our mouth out of fear and frustration. Hey, there's going to be the presence of frustration, I'm just telling you. They even told you here, whether it's in the, in the presence of pestilence, whether it's in the presence of, uh, of, of just uh, uh, of aggravation, whether it's in the presence of judgment, it's the presence of the sword, there will be obstacles against your life. It's one thing that's not going to change until the perfection sets itself on this world again, is there will be an enemy that's after you. We have to accept. We got to quit going to our old churchy prayer closet and say, man, devil, just leave me alone. He ain't going nowhere. Come on, don't be weak people. Don't be weak people. A strong man in the world will stand toe to toe and look him in the eye and say, Jack, this is a battle for authority and today you ain't getting mine. You ain't getting mine. You can go find it anywhere else, but today I'll stand here, whether it's in the presence of the sword or the presence of pestilence. Whether it's in judgment, I will stand here, and you will not rob my authority. You will not rob my voice. You will not rob my praise. Come on now. You ain't getting it today, Jack. It's mine, hallelujah. It's mine, hallelujah. You ain't getting my praise. Watch, watch, watch. Watch, watch. Look. If, if, 
he can get us to begin to speak out of fear and frustration. Listen to me, the Bible teaches us very plainly that the mouth was used to create. You can't remove the principle from the kingdom. God spoke everything into existence. So the power and the authority of the kingdom, of the spirit of the kingdom, is that when something is spoken, something is birthed. Amen. Now watch. The Bible teaches us that there is life and there is death. Now follow me. So when you begin to speak, he's trying to rob your mindset and captivate you to where you use language out of frustration. Because when you use language out of frustration, you give birth to death. Amen. 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 Now watch. This is how this thing works. It's not that something ceases to exist. It's something that gives life that begins to work in the opposite direction of the way life moves. So you literally have just frustrated the production of your life. You have frustrated the way that God is trying to move you. You have frustrated and you have confused and you have clouded the direction that God is trying to move you in when you begin to speak out of frustration. Because I have just birthed my own struggle. I have just birthed my own struggle. I keep blaming the enemy. The enemy didn't make you say what you said. The enemy tricked you into saying what you said. But he can't force nothing to come out of your mouth. But man, he'll bring them from every angle. It's sideways. He'll bring it from every person, whether they love me or whether they hate me, just to get me frustrated. So I'll burst something that I have to spend my life fighting against. My God. We have to be people that are smart in the spirit. We got to be, be, begin to look beyond what we see in the natural. We have to see things in the spirit to realize what we're giving birth to, man. Well, let me, let me just, let me, let me give you, let me give you a little something. If my frustration births death, that works against where God is trying to move me. Then what does my praise birth? What does my, we can't, the Bible says, man, that we can't be double-minded people. That out of the same mouth, you cannot spew blessings and cursings. Are you following me? I can't out of the same mouth spew blessings and cursings. I can't proclaim the name of God and then curse everything God's built. Just because I don't like them, don't give me the authority to rebuke them in Jesus' name. It don't give me a reason to call them out. It doesn't give me a reason to be frustrated when things ain't working right. Let me stand there in the posture of praise and begin again to declare something in the presence of the Almighty God. Jehoshaphat did something amazing. It said he feared. So he had a moment that his mind was captivated. Are you hear me? The enemy put a lock on his thoughts for a moment. But before he stood before the armies and the people and declared anything, Bible says that he set himself to seek the Lord. Now watch. The translation of the word set means to give. Now he, he had to get a little bit forceful with himself. He said in the presence right now of my frustration and my pain, I've got to force myself to give something. Come on now. Come. Come on. And here's what I'm going to give. Come on. To seek the Lord. Now when you translate that, it says to study the true God. That ought to be our first response. Let me not be foolish enough to realize that I'm not wrestling against flesh and blood. 
My battle ain't with her. <laughs> now, see, I got to have a little bit more spiritual insight to realize there's something going on up here that's forcing her to say what she's saying and act the way she's acting and doing what she's doing. I'm not fighting against her. So before I say anything against her, let me step back and give myself to seeking truth. Before the, here's the thing, folks. The Bible teaches us that the enemy is deceiving, which means that he is the father of all lies. And when I allow him to capture my mind and control my speech, it means what comes out of my mouth when it's being manipulated by his spirit is nothing but a lie. It may be that I think that I think I know the reality of the situation, but until I dig deeper into the spirit realm and begin to see things for the way they are, and I see things the way God sees them, and I begin to step back and seek the mind and the truth of God, don't let me open my mouth and spread a lie. Amen, amen. He set himself to seek the Lord. And I love it. He proclaimed a fast. <laughs> he proclaimed a fast. Here's what he did. Fast means a cleansing. All right? He proclaimed a fast. Here's what he did. He backed up. Let me change the language. Because when you fast, you get rid of it all. When you fast, you consecrate yourself unto the Lord. Let me eliminate everything that's keeping me from you. Here's what he says. He, he proclaimed a repentance. Repentance by definition means a mind change. He said, I realize in my attack that my mind has been challenged and has caught me to begin to thinking things that I ought not think. And so let me step back and see the truth. And when I see the truth, I need to repent of what captured my mind and begin to set myself on the ways and the thoughts of the Lord. And Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord and from all the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord now what I like right here is that the translation of the word Lord right here is Yahweh watch Yahweh translated is creator performer of promise and life giver watch he said here's what we're going to do we're going to seek help from the life giver before I ever open my mouth because I realize that the principles of the kingdom have taught me that life and death are in the power of the tongue and so in order for me to speak life I've got to seek life I'm going to seek the life giver and when I begin to seek the life giver, not only do I find out that life is in me, life is around me, and life is even present in what seems like it's dead. But it also reminds me that he is the performer of my promise. It also reminds me that the work he began in me, he's faithful to perform it until the end. What it's going to remind me is that even when all hell is breaking out against me and it seems like I can't get out and it seems like I'm challenged in every way and it seems like failure is intimate, man, man, that God is still working for me, that God still believes in me, that God is still working out and creating if necessary in order to see me fulfill everything he established for me. like this after he had a repentance and he began to seek truth then you see Jehoshaphat the king of praise the king of language begin to speak I love it he stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord and before the new court and he said Oh Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God in heaven? Do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? 
Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land? What he said is, you did it before, you can do it again. You did it before, you can do it again. I've seen you work it out for my mama. You can work it out for me. The enemy's tried to rob every time that you've worked on my behalf, but I'm going to carry myself back to the moment that you were a life giver, and I'm going to begin to stand in your presence and remember the moments that you breathed life into me and that you encouraged me, and I will stand here again. And if you did it then, if you did it in 2000, if you did it in 2012, you'll do it again in 2018. Are you not the one who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to me? Watch this. Listen. Are you not the one who drove out the wickedness? Are you not the one who drove out all of my enemies just so you could give me a gift? Watch. The only one that can take your gift back is the one that gave it. There ain't an enemy in your life that's come to try to rob and steal and kill from you that has the authority to take back what God has seated in your life. He don't have the power to do it. He does not possess the authority to do it. He can assemble all the devils in hell and they still can't take from you what God has promised for your life. And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, if disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, man, I'm going to stand right here. Uh -huh. It's your house. <laughs> Can't nobody make me leave your presence. David begged God, said, God, don't take your presence from me. I can go anywhere as long as I'm with you. I can walk in any situation as long as I have your presence. God, don't take your spirit from me. Ain't no devil in hell that can fight what you put on the inside of me, God. I'll go anywhere you want me to go and face anything you want me to face, but don't take your spirit from me. I'm going to stand here. And in the middle of this, I'm going to cry out. I'm going to cry out. We have to begin to look at this and realize that there may have been anguish that was seated by the fear, but what they're crying out in the presence of tears is still praise. Somebody get that? Now to us it looks like they were just wailing and they were frustrated and it seemed like that everything was circling in around them and were going to cave in around them. But even though there may have been the presence of pain, they were still praising the almighty God. You are here and you will save me. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we have to prophesy with our language. Sometimes we have to begin to declare to our environment what we don't presently see with our eyes. I got to begin to use my praise. Not to, let, me, let me tell you guys something. Praise is not just something you use in a moment of triumph. Man, praise is a weapon. Somebody with me? Praise is a weapon. It don't mean I break out my praise when there ain't no war going on. It means I better get it out when all hell has come against me. Praise is the weapon that I will use to defeat the enemies that have come against me. Let me get my praise out when I'm crying. Let me get my praise out when it seems like nothing's going right around me. Let me get my praise out when my marriage is in shambles. Let me get my praise out when they handed me my pink slip. Let me get my praise out. I gotta prophesy to my situation. I gotta prophesy to what's going on around me. I gotta begin to declare something to my environment that my environment don't believe can happen, but I see it in the spirit, Jack. 
I saw what he did before and I believe he's going to do it again. You might not can see it right now, but I know it, man, and I'm going to begin to declare it into the environment that I walk in. Watch. Watch. When we change what we declare about our environment, we change what manifests in our environment. You with me? It doesn't mean that there's not the presence of the enemy, distraction, obstacle, pain. It doesn't mean that. But God's presence isn't deterred or offended by an enemy. You with me? God doesn't make his decisions based on what the enemy's doing. God makes decisions based on purpose. God ain't move just because the enemy gets his, you know, his underwear and, and, and you know, girded up. God don't move just because the enemy thinks he's got something on him. The enemy does not bother God. As a matter of fact, I would dare say that God don't even think about it. He's not worried about it. So the presence of God in your situation has absolutely nothing to do with the presence of obstacles and frustration and enemies. In order for God to be in your midst, he has to have a place to live. Somebody get that? Watch. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. Sometimes the problem that we don't see God working in our situations is although we believe there's a God there, we're not speaking his language. That although we believe that there's this Jesus that died on the cross and we believe in the presence of the Holy Spirit, we won't make room for him to get involved. I, I speak cursings, man. I speak things that God don't recognize. God is not a negative God. God is not a critical God. God is a God of life. God is a God of positivity. God is a God of hope and faith, man. God is a God of dreams and purpose. I got to begin speaking the language of my God. I can't allow the enemy to rob my praise. I got to build him a house. I got to build him a place to live. I got to build him a place to begin to work in. God's not looking at your enemy, man, and worried about your enemy. And he's not saying to himself, I'm not going there because there's an enemy present. He says, I haven't been invited there because they haven't praised me. The people I'll begin to work in is regardless of what's going on around me. They don't lose focus in who I am in their life. And they'll praise me, man, in the rain or in the sunshine. I need somebody to build me some room. I need somebody to make some space. Come on, you think I'm lying? Man, you start praising when everything seems like hell is working on you. It'll make some space. The demons will begin to tremble. They'll get about the way. They'll realize that's not a place they can stay. It's not a place they can go. They can't mess with you. They'll run if you begin to shout in the middle of your turmoil. Some of y'all need to wake up tomorrow and instead of saying it's Monday, my God, today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I ain't dreading this Monday. I don't care what my calendar looks like. I don't care how many meetings I got. Today is the day that my God has made. Today is the day my God has made. You ain't gonna take my shout. good enough that we just trust that Jesus died. I got to begin to take on his mind and begin to take on his language and begin to create his environment. If I want to see heaven come to earth, I got to build earth, a heaven on earth. What, what we have to be aware of is that we have confused people in the church to believe that praise is something we do with a microphone on a Sunday morning. Adam didn't have no microphone in a Sunday morning service. The 
the Bible tells me he walked with God. He never left his presence. He was with him at all times. He walked to the apple orchard, there was God. He walked down to the brook, there was God. Everywhere he went, he was in the presence of the Almighty God. What I, what, what I have to begin to understand is that praise is not just a song. It ain't just a shout. Pra yeah. Yeah. Praise is a kingdom language yes. That's right. mm. That projects upon your environment What you see in the spirit That's what praise is Praise says regardless of what I see in my flesh I see something different with my God Regardless of what you're coming at me with, I see something different. I even see you're a different person than what you're acting like right now. I realize there's more in you than what you're letting on right now. I realize that you've allowed the enemy to capture your fear and to capture your language. But Jack, I see a man of God. I see a woman of God. And I'm going to praise God for you. I'm going to project upon my life. I'm going to project upon my surroundings. Let me start talking to my marriage a different way. Let me start thanking God for my wife. I know she drives me up the wall sometimes, but it's in the middle of that time. I will thank God for my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I ain't going to thank God for what I don't see. I'm going to thank God for what I do see in the spirit. I'm going to thank God that she's got a purpose, and she's got a voice, and she's got an anointing. I'm going to start thanking God. I'm going to project upon my environment what I see in the kingdom. That's why I can't just let my praise be a moment shoved in between 1045 and 12 o'clock on Sunday mornings. I'm going to walk in my job tomorrow and start talking a different language. I'm going to walk in my ministries and start talking a different language. I'm going to walk around my children and I'm going to start talking a different language because I see something different in you than what you're letting on right now. I'm going to project upon my environment. I'm going to give my environment something it can't handle. And that's the overwhelming presence of the Almighty God. Amen. You want to start bringing some, some change to your situations? You want to start bringing, getting things righteously aligned and in order? Bring the Creator back to it. Amen. The Bible says that every knee will bow. Every tongue has no choice but to confess. That Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is Lord. The word Lord means owner. Everybody knows he built me. Everybody's spirit knows he made me. Every creative thing. This chair knows really who built it. You follow me? That's why let me get in my environment and start inviting the creator in. Let me change my language. Some of y'all need to push negativity to the side. You need to get rid of those in your life. That, man, it's creating a different environment than what you're trying to build. Kick them out the way. You ain't got to get rid of them. Just don't let them speak. I don't give you permission to call out my environment. I'm going to change the thing, man. I'm talking about how good things are going to be. How God's going to bless me. God's going to bless you too, man. I'm trusting God for a lot of things. But my God, I'm not letting you call that crap in my surroundings. out of here you're talking wicked language wicked language watch watch let me show you this it says in verse 11 here they are rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession which you have given us to inherit here's what we need to understand we're already working from success we're already working from victory in the spirit, he done moved hell and earth out of the way for you to have your inheritance. Amen. Why do we talk language of death and failure when we already possess the inheritance? Now watch what happens though. Oh my God, will you not judge them? For we have no power. Watch. If we allow them to captivate our mind and change our language, we have no authority over the great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. Watch. Watch. Your language can cause you to forfeit promise. 
Your language can cause you to give away victory that you already had. If I'm in the presence of what God has blessed me, I dare not curse it. Because I, how many times have we forfeited what God prepared for us just because our language wasn't in line with the king? It says in verse 15, and he said, Listen, all of you, Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but it's God's. Stay with me. Tomorrow, don't pray away the pain. Stand in the middle of it and give it a different language. Tomorrow, go down to the place where you were afflicted. Tomorrow, walk in your job that you frustrated with, with the people around you that you frustrated with, and bring a different language to it. He says, you will not need to fight in this battle. Position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. Watch. He says, O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear. Don't lose perspective. Because if you lose perspective, you'll be dismayed, which means you'll crack. If you lose perspective, you'll crack. If you lose perspective in the presence of the Almighty God, if you lose perspective in the middle of your victory, you will crack and you will say something that forfeits everything he's prepared for you. And the problem with that is there are many things that we face that do not require our spiritual warring. It just requires a different mindset and a better language. Sometimes, watch, watch, watch. Sometimes we're trying to fight battles with our gift when it's not our gift that will whip it. It's our voice. And I find myself getting frustrated and confused because I keep trying to fight my battles with my gift and this wasn't a gift moment. This was a battle for the Lord. I just had to change the language to invite him in. I could stand there and not use my gift and not use my resources. I just had to change my language. Watch, let me fast forward. I'm going to close up. Watch. Watch. Let's see. 22 now. Now, let me start at 21. And when he had consulted with the people, you know what? I got to back up and read it all because y'all got to see this. Then 19. Then the Levites of the children of the, uh, of the Kohathites and the children of the Kohathites stood up and praised the Lord God of Israel with the voices loud and high. They rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Set your mind upon him. Gain a perspective. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed the one. He set the ones out front that understood the language of the heavens. Right. Right. I'm going to set the ones out front that ain't afraid to praise. When he set them out front, those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness. And as they went out before the army, they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And as they begin to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against praise and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped destroy one another. My praise becomes a weapon. Because when the enemy has come in and thought that he had captivated my mindset and began to deceive me, and because of that, he began to take authority in my environment and manipulate it and control it with the way he wanted to order it. But the moment in the presence of that, that I step back and set my mind on God and I begin to praise and I change the atmosphere and the environment of where I'm at and God's presence is ushered in, it confuses something about the enemy because he does not understand the works and the spirit of the Lord 
they fought themselves. It says they took, I ain't gonna read it all, but they took a huge spoil. Didn't even have to fight because the victory was already theirs. And God said, and I've already taken what the wicked had on them and set it for you to pick up and put in your pocket. And as they did so, it goes on down in verse 29. It says, and the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they heard that the Lord had fought against the enemies of Israel. And then the realm, watch, the realm, God, this is so good. And then the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. Come on. How many of you would just like the voices in your head sometimes to shut up? Amen. How many would love for the voices of doubt and frustration and fear and anger just to man to shut up, to just stop speaking and quit and just leave you alone and quit aggravating your mind? Everything that's trying to tell you you ain't enough, you ain't good enough, you ain't got enough, you can't do enough, you're not making enough impact, you don't have enough in your pocket, there ain't enough to go around, man. Just a shut up. Let me invite praise in. Let me invite my praise in. Because when I invite praise into my environment, there ain't nothing that can come against me. There's nothing that can overcome me. Nothing that can over overthrow me. When I let God's presence come in to my environment because I have changed the situation by my language, there ain't a devil in hell that can take what you got. Right. Ain't a devil in hell that can rob who you are. Ain't a devil in hell. Here's what I need. I need people who have a different level of praise. We can't talk about changing people, changing lives, changing cities, changing governments. Here, here's the problem. We can't change governments because we're using the same critical spirit to speak about them. I ain't getting no help over here. Let me come over here. I can't change my school systems because I'm too busy complaining about them. Don't you know God loves your babies? Don't you know God built your babies? Don't you know God built every teacher and every principal and every counselor and every administrator? He resurrected the building and paved the doggone parking lot. He loves it more than you could ever think about it. So bring him back into it, man. Start shouting praises over it. Start thanking God for it. Start praying over your babies and saying something different about it. Shut your language down. Get rid of the negativity. Get rid of the frustration. And ain't nothing can fight you. I need people with a different level of praise. Yep. Come on. I'm going to count to three. And I need somebody that will stand up with me and shout to God in a way you never have. You better break through some of your frustrations. Don't you lay, man, ragged in that seat because you've allowed your mind to be captured by an enemy that's lying to you. You muster through that thing. And you shout to the Almighty God. Because if you can't do it with us, you won't do it tomorrow when you ain't got nobody around you that thinks like we do. You ready? I need a shout. You ready? One, two, three. Praise your name, God. Hallelujah. We celebrate you, God. We shout you, God. We celebrate the King you are. We lift you up, God. We lift you up, God. Nothing like you. God, we change our environment. We rebuke every devil, God. We thank you, Father. Begin to challenge, God, our environment. Challenge our devils. Challenge our enemies. We praise your name. We praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Oh my God, hallelujah. We worship you, God. We thank you that you're the God of every problem. 
You're the God of our jobs. You're the God of our families. You're the God of our marriage. You're the God of our city. You're the God of every school, God. The God of every government, Lord. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we worship you. We worship you, God. Ah! Hallelujah. 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 God, change their language. Change their language. Change their language. God, I pray you drive out every critic. You suck the life every bit out of every bit of negativity. Change their language. The Bible says that you are the lion of the tribe of praise. You can only be king of the people who celebrate you. You can only be king of the ones that create your environment. We praise you. Amen. We'll be people of your language. We will not be convinced, confused, or deceived to speak the language of our environment. But we will change our environment because we bring heaven's language to it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Man, I love you. Be people of praise. I want to see every dog on one of you back next week. Y'all be blessed. You have been listening to the Rejuvenate Church broadcast. If you shared in today's service with us, visit us at www.rejuvenatechurch.com and send us a message. We would love to hear from you. Rejuvenate Church invites you to be our guest if you're in the upstate of South Carolina. We are located in Anderson, South Carolina, inside the Anderson Mall across from Books A Million. Our service times are Sundays at 1045 a.m. and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. For up-to-date information, visit our website or connect with us on social media. We are found on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pastor Jason Wilson and Rejuvenate Church desire to bridge the gap that divides race, age, and economic status. We are transforming culture by engaging and shaping men and women through relationships and positive kingdom influences. Thank you for listening. We look forward to the opportunity to share with you again at Rejuvenate Church.